There you are, innocently eating your PB&J at the kitty table when Aunt Jane strolls over and drops the bomb. What do you want to be when you grow up? Or for many of our friends from around the world, it sounds more like doctor or engineer. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure. And how do most kids find their answer to this daunting big life question? Your neighbor tells you you're good at math. All of a sudden, you're an accountant. Your dad's a teacher, says you're good with children, and boom, now you're a teacher. What's challenging about this philosophy is that our lives in so many ways then become a consequence of the path that we choose. So does this really lead to happy, fulfilled, productive adults? And what makes it more tricky is there's a human paradox. As humans, we crave change, adventure, novelty. We simultaneously also crave predictability, stability, and comfort. So much of the human experience is <laughs> sorting through and exploring where do we each fall on this spectrum. I'll tell you which end of the spectrum I was on. I grew up in a legacy of engineers, so I had even fewer choices than doctor engineer. It was which type would you like to be? So I went totally like bat dung crazy off the ranch, black sheeped it and studied finance and economics, got a job in commercial finance with GE Capital and actually did reasonably well. Got a couple promotions and things were going along just fine. But the problem was I was experiencing a real lack of passion in my life. I craved more freedom, more independence. I realized I needed to divorce my time from my income so that I could wake up every day and do what I love. But the challenge was I didn't know how. We call this the fulfillment gap. And I'm guessing that you or someone you love or know can relate to this, if not at one point, many points in your life. So the answer for me, MBA school. Not really because it was just more of the same, just learning how to be better at it. Right? And then I started to invest in real estate, investing in the stock market. But the challenge with those is not that I couldn't get in the game, it's that I couldn't scale them. So what's a boy to do? I felt I was set by societal standards I was succeeding, but I still had no clear path to live a life that I was passionate about. And if we only get one shot at it, why would we want to do anything else? Well, and over on the other end of the spectrum, I was not uh, investing or doing real estate. You were not. Um, I studied women's studies and sociology, was very free-spirited and excited about most things. The voices <laughs> in my head were a lot different. It was go find yourself, chase your passions, you know, go have fun. And after graduating, I did that. I went backpacking through Southeast Asia for a few months, was debating, do I keep traveling? Do I take that massage course in Bangkok? Or do I go to the Chicago Art Institute for Photography? But due to my funds and bank account, none of these were actually real viable ideas, but I was energized around them all. So the challenge for people like me, it's not lack of interest or passion or ideas, but it's narrowing in and down on what gets us closer to the life vision, which as we define it is how do we want to live, the person we want to become, mm -hmm. and the level of impact that we want to create. So in the end, you'd have been proud. I did choose the practical route. I came home, went into preschool teaching, the pendulum swung hard because I had bills to pay. <laughs> and so, you know, having a love for children, the first consequence was fulfillment, which is great. The second order consequence, though, was that I was making just above the poverty line, literally bawling on a budget and still hardly able to pay my bills. So mm -hmm. it was that gut check that made me question the formula. Do I have to sacrifice my needs and my bigger ambitions to like help people and have significance? Does it have to be one or the other? And following traditional logic of getting a good job and living happily ever after, it definitely insinuates there's one magical path. Yeah. But that's not really the case for most people in reality. So with that being said, we have to teach children and young people how to both analytically sort out their decisions and the long-term effects of their decisions while still thinking and dreaming big. And because we know people can have more fluidity in their life and our decisions don't have to be so binary, particularly if you're willing to tweak that traditional formula. Well, fortunately for Carrie and I, we met some successful business owners early on in our career. They'd built a direct sales business on the side of their careers and were actually able to step away from their corporate jobs. That changed our life completely. We finally had real life examples, proof that it could be done, and we got a nurture, nurturing support and environment to help us move forward and exercise and build on our entrepreneurial tendencies since we clearly had no skills. Mm. So they helped us start a direct sales business because it was low cost and we could scale and keep our jobs. A lot of the other options we looked at simply didn't fit that bill. We had built that business to about a million in revenue. Carrie stepped away from her uh, preschool teaching career in her 20s. 
we continued to scale that while starting an educational company and scaled to a level that I was able to step away from my commercial banking career. That allowed us to open up our calendar and chase our passions. Since then, we've been able to do angel investing, write a book, co-found a tech company, bought a lake house, launched a podcast, founded a nonprofit. We basically were able to be, create a lifestyle where we were full-time parents and full-time entrepreneurs. And we wish this lifestyle and choice for everyone. But if so many people have created it, or many have created it, what's holding you back? Why shouldn't you? We believe you should. And quite frankly, with all the macro changes in our economy, AI, cryptocurrency, the great resignation, we need to change how we're helping people and create better systems to support and nurture the entrepreneurial spirit. And we know side hustling itself is not a new idea, but we believe it should be ubiquitous. And we need to start providing a stronger framework to support it. We shouldn't be asking our neighbor if they have a side hustle, but what their side hustle is. We hear so much talk about people, I wanna do this, I'm thinking about that, but then they never make a move. Well, the reality is there might be some exceptions out there, not, but not that many of us are extremes like Elon Musk who are gonna build multiple world-changing companies, nor do we wanna sit you know, in the corporate job for the rest of our lives or the Zoom square or rectangle as it may be, right? So we need something in the middle. Couple examples, become a graphic designer or a CPA, but if you love athletics, coach on the side. If you get good at it, you can always move to that full time, right? Or maybe you wanna chase your passions like Crazy Carrie over here, okay? And you've always wanted to start that ska band, like go for it, build your band, travel the world, do it full time, but maybe on the evenings and weekends, you could actually learn computer programming because someday if you did have a family, your children wanna eat, you can support them. Look, the reasons to side hustle are vast. There are so many beyond just diversifying your income, you diversify your skills. You can use it to explore new passions and interests. You also get the financial education and the tax deductions that come with it. For some of us, that's begrudgingly. But the reality is, is those skills are something no one can ever take away from you, right? And the challenge though, is if building a side hustle is so valuable, why aren't more people doing it or doing it well? Well, and there's a lot of misconceptions and yes. there's real roadblocks. So let's talk through some of those. First off, you don't have to be passionate to start a business. You do not. <laughs> Just like you don't have to be passionate about your job, which many of you are not. Interest alone, it's enough if you're passionate about how it connects to your long-term long vision. Um, you don't also need a novel, life-changing idea or product to start a side hustle. You don't have to be an inventor. We certainly are not. Yeah. There are plenty of plug-and-play opportunities, existing systems you can access and play off of, such as a lower-cost franchise, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, or consulting. Um, hustle culture is not necessarily synonymous with having a side hustle. Don't yeah. lose sight of what's important to you. Take care of the foundational areas of your life, but potentially swap some of the Netflix time or the mindless TikTok watching time and do mm. something more meaningful. You can do a lot in small pockets of time. Also know that you're not starting at ground zero. We've established you're a baller, you're a big deal, you're a dynamic person, mm -hmm. you're more dynamic than your job title. You already have entrepreneurial tendencies and some transferable skills. They just need to be nurtured by the right people and in the right environment. And business ownership in itself is a skill. Just like you weren't always a nurse, you weren't always drawing blood or doing math or even identifying numbers. So thinking fluid versus fixed. Also, you can love your job. You can go get those promotions like Craig did. We don't recommend quitting your job. That's why we're suggesting a side business approach. Lastly, you can start small and practical. Your first business doesn't have to be your last. It wasn't for us. It rarely ever is. <laughs> but most people just never take that first step because they've built a mountain of expectations on what they think it should look like. So maybe you're interested in starting a restaurant. Start a food cart first. Maybe do some yep. light catering. And after you've established yourself and you've tested your concept, you can then scale your commitment and investment. A fun example, our daughter, Eloise, she wants to start a veterinary clinic down the road. She's currently eight, so we suggested, hey, let's start a dog care business first. Hound Lover Services was born. <laughs> she got her first client in March, and very sadly, our neighbor's dog passed away. But they did end up getting a new puppy, and she's back in business. And she's already preparing herself for the emotional roller coaster that is entrepreneurship. She's also gaining insight and experience on what the process looks like. So how do we side hustle skillfully? 
well, we believe there's an epidemic of people starting side hustles, but not finishing them, right? So we have about 40,000 suggestions. Here's our top five. Okay, number one, you've got to define what finishing looks like. Okay, without a clear destination, you won't actually hit your mark. It's like a GPS. You can't just punch in south. Well, I just want to make some more extra money. That's not going to get you to a real goal if you haven't defined it, right? Number two, you got to develop the right mindset and life set. Okay. Well, mindset, many people have studied and heard of. It's very popular. There's a lot of great content to help you shift the way you think from being an employee to being a business owner. It's critical. However, how we apply the mindset and what manifests in our life is called our life set. Essentially, it's the proof of our mindset. So if your mindset is the way you think and our opinions, okay, then life set is actually the way we live and our choices. And if you're struggling to manage your 50, 60, 70, $80,000 budget personally, it's going to be really difficult to build a six, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar business. Developing a good life set and making incremental changes over time allows you to build the right foundation to create long-term success with your side hustle on top of it. Number three, learn how to evaluate and leverage business systems, not just get excited about a random product. Okay. We have spent most of us our entire lives being consumers and evaluating product. So many people come to us and say, hey, I have this idea. I have this idea. Ideas are good, but if you can't scale the idea and automate it, it's not going to improve your lifestyle, right? Take, uh, for example, an Airbnb. You can definitely get, it, get an Airbnb and do it all yourself, or you can leverage their platform and you can hire a company to do the marketing. You can hire someone to do all the cleaning. You might make less money, but ultimately you'll have more time that you can then scale with. Number four, embrace experiential learning. A lot of us have deep, deep, proud roots in academia, mm -hmm. decades of textbooks and lectures, but you can't build a business just from memorizing data. At some point you have to take action, embrace that you don't have it all figured out until you go do it. A lot of people really suck at sucking, so you want to get good at this. <laughs> For example, get in environments that are uncomfortable, where you're out learning how to public speak or network. You're getting some feedback, and you're working on refining and making changes and going through the growing pains of growing your skill sets. Embracing that entrepreneurship is one of the best personal development arenas in the world and really leveraging that to your advantage. Number five, realize the people you surround yourself with will have more impact on your life than anything else. Your language, your income, your happiness, your religion, your fill in the blank. How is starting a business any different? It isn't. We recommend a paradigm shift, the who before the what. Okay. And in that process, you might actually have to get out of your comfort zone and go seek people out like a mentor or a coach to empower you through the challenging times. For us, having a mentor or a coach made all the difference because they could see things many miles down the road. And when we did have a challenge, they didn't just say you should quit like a family member might. Realize the people who love us are not always qualified to empower us. So how do we actually institute real change? We propose making this conversation you know, part of the dialogue in homes, having yeah. side hustles be part of the, the convo. So first, we have to keep encouraging kids to keep thinking big and creatively. As a former teacher and now parents of two kids, I know there's ownership I can take that we can take as adults. Kids have bright, fun, entrepreneurial ideas. We sometimes inadvertently squelch them. So let's start nurturing and playing out those ideas. Secondly, we have to start asking better questions, retiring tired questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And instead focus on things like, what are, what are your relationships or experiences that you value the most? What challenges do you have that you think you could come up with a solution for? Mm -hmm. How do you think you can make a positive impact on people or the planet? And make it fun. Get out the glue, the scissors. Help your child create a vision board for themselves. Our four-year-old, Augustin, he has a lot of superheroes on his. He can evolve those ideas and concepts over time. But when your child shares an idea with you, great, you want to build robots. Super cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think that would look like, feel like? What do you think would make that challenging, energizing? I'm maybe not your best resource, but let's go find some together that would actually help give you a better detailed picture of what building robots might look like. So instead of redirecting kids immediately to think traditionally, slapping a job title or industry label on them before they even know how to ride a bike, 
Let's help them start to develop some early analytics around their ideas. And in having entrepreneurial chatter be a bigger part of the conversation, we can help our kids create a more personally curated life vision that might include a possible side hustle someday. We also need to start asking better questions to our young adults as well. Instead of simply what college do you want to go to, what's your major going to be, your trade school, or what job you might get after high school, our question should sound more like how important is having lots of money or traveling or having free time? How do you want to live? What skills will you need and who do you know who could maybe help you develop those skills or create some of the vision that you have? How can you start shadowing those people? Maybe look for an internship, a co-op, or informational interview. And then consider starting a business project or a side hustle now while in school so that you ex can have experiential learning to complement what you're learning in the classroom. Here's our proposal. We need to start weaving these types of questions and conversation into the curriculum at a high school level. This could be something as simple as a small workbook and a, and a couple one-hour sessions with the school guidance counselor your junior year, or perhaps a two-week seminar, a summer boot camp, or ultimately what we propose, a one-year class. Can we really justify asking high schoolers to spend an entire semester oxidizing equations, memorizing the quadratic formula, and you know, memorizing other things that could just be found with a Google search? rather than actually think about what type of work or business or life they want to create and maybe take those things, those industries, and go learn about them specifically? I think not. It should be in all of our best interest. Isn't it our best, most important responsibility to empower kids to ask these questions, answer them, and explore those answers? And for the rest of us adults out there, if no one is asking you the hard questions, start asking yourself. What type of work have you always wanted to do but never explored? Or what lifestyle changes would feel meaningful? And who do you currently know or who could you get out of your comfort zone and go meet that's already created that lifestyle? Next, take some flipping action. <laughs> okay, life rewards action. Embrace that you might fail, just take the appropriate risk. We did that and it led to a life that has really, really been magical. We wish that upon everyone, and we believe that with all the macro changes happening in the economy, that we need to have the courage to pursue, as Walt Disney might say, those things that are most meaningful. Because just as important as creating institutional change and nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit, we can best empower our children by being the example. And that, we believe, is an idea worth spreading.